Welcome, and thank you for taking the time to explore the CityWorks Local Government Templates. These templates were designed in alignment with ESRI's Local Government Data Model. Organizations using ESRI's Local Government Data Model are able to take advantage of these templates for their CityWorks implementation and experience a quick and cost-effective turnaround for their deployment as well. Based off experience with the client base of municipal government, CityWorks built a database already populated with a variety of service requests, work orders, and inspections common to local government. The templates cover activities for water, sewer, storm, streets and traffic, forestry, buildings, and more. In addition, these templates are updated regularly to continually expand the functionality. This video will provide an overview of what is included in the local government templates as well as how these activities can be used to power the core functionality of CityWorks. So what we are viewing here is the CityWorks inbox, and this functions as a dashboard for each user into the system. This inbox can be configured with searches, charts, and a variety of widgets that can provide up-to-date information specific to each user's daily operations. And as you'll see here, the search results displaying the open work orders and open service requests, as well as the charts showing year-to-date activity, are all pulling from the information types that are already present in those local government templates. Before proceeding, I'd like to take a chance to show you what is available in those templates. And so if I come into the system to create a new service request, you'll see here the CityWorks tree hierarchy, and you can see a variety of categories. As I expand, you'll see all the different water service request types that are available to organizations. There are also items available for forestry. Sewer. Parks. And more. In addition, we have a variety of work order templates that have been configured in CityWorks. And again, these were based off of the asset types and asset naming that's already available in ESRI's local government model. You can see here for electric and facilities, as I move down into the system and I open up the asset types for water and navigate to the hydrants, these are some of the work order templates that are currently available in the CityWorks database. Likewise, if I move into the sewer asset category and move to manholes, you'll notice a variety of work order templates that are available here as well. And all of these templates for both service requests, work orders, as well as inspections are available as a baseline sample of activities. These can be taken and used as is for an organization's implementation of CityWorks, or they can be modified and added to later on as the implementation grows and expands. In addition, we've also populated the CityWorks templates with some common equipment and materials used by local government organizations, as well as including FEMA equipment types and equipment rates to ease some of that regulatory re reporting process that's common to local government. And all of this is done and built directly on ESRI's ArcGIS server platform. You'll see here as I open the map view, I have a feed of my GIS data in real time. And one of the other items I'd like to point out is that we're also consuming an ArcGIS online map service here. So there's a variety of map sources that can also be used and consumed by CityWorks to ease the implementation and usage of the system, as well as providing cost-effective alternatives to implementation. Now I'd like to return back to my CityWorks inbox and further dive into some of these activities. One thing I'd like to point out, as you'll see here, as I'm in the system and I open different activities, the map automatically navigates and recenters to bring me to that service request location. I'm also able to use the CityWorks quick search window and type in a specific service request number, which it will then pull open for me as well. And again, the map will again navigate and recenter to bring me to that location. 
So I, at this point, I'll close the map just to maximize our screen space for the work management side. And you can see here some of the information that's being tracked on the service request forms. We can associate this information to projects to ease with regulatory reporting, track comments from each user along with their login and date and time stamp, include attachments that might help to ease the reporting process and provide more of the background for the service request investigation. And then I also have a work order here that was attached to the service request and generated to take care of the maintenance side and close out this activity. When I open the work order, you'll see likewise the service request that initiated it is tied in here. And I have the actual assets from the GIS that are linked to this work order, as well as the location from the map. And then there's some other information that can also be tracked on the CityWorks work order forms. To ease the application of resources and the data tracking in the system, we've created a one-point entry screen called ELM. And ELM allows generation of a crew, which combines the labor, equipment, and material needed for a job. And I can go through at this point and provide some updated information of the work that was done with the start and finish dates and the amount of time that was needed to complete the work. I can also go ahead and apply the equipment that was used on the job. And it's all done and automatically shown to me what the expected entities are. And I can, in one screen, apply those resources, say save, and it will apply those resources to the overall cost of my work order. Now if I navigate back to the main work order screen, I can scroll down and also view the summary of those work order costs here. So I can see my labor cost, equipment cost, and the total work order cost. This is information that's all part of the core functionality within CityWorks. Another type of activity that's part of the core of CityWorks are the inspections. The inspection types that were included in the local government templates were actually based off of research of the standards made available by AWWA and WEF. You'll notice here on this manhole inspection form, there are a variety of inspection observations that are documented. And for each of these answers, in terms of the observations noted in the field, there is a set of explanations and instructions that are returned back to those users. In the CityWorks local government templates, each of the observations that you notice here on the inspection form are associated with a specific weight. Likewise, each of the answers for each observation have an associated score. The combination of these items over the course of the inspection will generate the condition score for that asset, which you'll notice here on the summary panel of this inspection form. These are all included. This functionality and the logistics of this are all included with those CityWorks local government templates and made available to all of the organizations that choose to utilize. Once these condition scores are being generated and tracked in the system, additional functionality for analyzing the condition is available through the map interface. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to navigate to a specific area within our data set and open the CityWorks condition tool. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my sewer manholes and run the condition score analysis. So at this point, it goes through and identifies all of the manholes within the area and looks back at the CityWorks historical inspections and identifies the condition scores over time as well as the current condition and health of each of the manholes identified. I can now turn on my heat map and view the density of these scores and also pull in some additional information from the GIS in terms of the material of these manholes as well as the installation date of the manholes. And you can see here this information is now being displayed back to that end user. I can select from this particular set of values and generate the selection set. So in this case, I'll go through and say I'm specifically interested in the older manholes. 
So I'm interested in the ones from 1978 and 1980. And as you can see, the heat map on the map is actually changing to represent my selection. And now I can go through from here and generate a selection set of manholes and now schedule these activities for a replacement or a rehabilitation of the manholes. Along the same lines, CityWorks also associates a maintenance score with all work order activities. And as these maintenance scores are taking place in the back end of the database, they are being accumulated to represent all the work being done in different regions. And so I can now navigate to a different area specific to my sewer maintenance. And so I'm going to go through and grab my gravity mains from the map and run the maintenance score analysis. And here now it's going back through the database and identifying all the work that's been done against the gravity mains in this region, accumulating the scores of those work activities and displaying them graphically for me in a spatial representation. And this allows me to quickly identify areas where more maintenance has been applied or where there's been a higher likelihood of repairs needed just because of the ongoing reactive work order types that are associated to the area. And then using some of that information, I can also go through and pull in the data that I have in my GIS to look at information associated to the material of these gravity mains, the diameter, install date, all of the attributes that are being tracked in my GIS. And this allows me to have a fuller picture of why more repairs might be taking place in certain parts of the collection system or in certain parts of the geography for the region. And these are all part of the core functionality of CityWorks, but they're being leveraged further with the use of those local government templates.